Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. My name is Emma Lefebvre and today we are starting part three of our beginner watercolor series. So if you missed part one and two, I will link them below, but just as a quick recap, part one, we went over all the supplies you're gonna need. I do think I forgot to mention you're gonna need water jars and paper towel. Those are essential, just in case I didn't mention that. And part two was on all the basic strokes and techniques you need to know to paint with watercolor. So what are we doing today? I get questions a lot from beginners saying, I want to start painting with watercolor. What's the first painting I should start with? And really the answer to that is whatever you actually want to paint. It may not come out the way you want it, but that's because you're a beginner and all beginners kind of start in the same place. I know I did. It took me a long time to get here. Please remember that I didn't just wake up and start painting well overnight. It takes practice. But today I'm going to show you a great easy painting to start with that goes over some of the techniques that we learned in our previous video. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we are going to be doing a mountain painting. Very, very simple. And we're going to be going over the techniques of wet on wet, wet on dry, and then just like a simple gradient in this painting. So it's a really good practice thing to do. Um, I have two different papers that I'm using today. So I wanted to show you what it's going to look like on high quality Arches cold press watercolor paper, which is my favorite. But knowing that a bunch of you that are watching are probably beginners, you may be using Canson cold press watercolor paper, which is a low quality paper. But this is the paper that I started out with. And you know, it's it's cheaper. So it might be easier to start out with. But I also just wanted to show you the difference in quality. So if you do get frustrated watching me paint on arches, and wondering why yours doesn't look like mine, I'm telling you, it's probably not you, it's your paper. So that's why I wanted to do both. Both papers are taped down with painters tape that I got from the dollar store. And I just taped them to a cardboard piece. And this is on the back of actually an arches pad. <laughs> and this is just so I can move it around if I need to move it out of frame when I'm working one at a time. Um, it's just easier than taping it down to your table. Okay, and then the paints that I'm using are my professional Winsor Newton watercolors. And then the brushes that I'm gonna be using are my Princeton snap brushes in a size 12 round, as well as a size six round. I may use it, may not, I don't know, we don't know yet. But yeah, so have your water jars ready, have your paper towel handy, and let's begin. Okay, so I'm gonna work on one painting at a time because I'm gonna allow some drying time in between. When you are doing things like wet on dry, you need to make sure that your background is fully dry before you go over it and layer. Otherwise, you can get some funky marks, which I will talk about. But right now, let's just work on one at a time. I'm gonna start with my Arches cold press watercolor paper to show you the ideal of what it looks like. Also, first, I'm gonna quickly jump into a bit of color theory. Um, I have tons of videos explaining color theory, so I'm not gonna go in depth, but basically this is a color wheel. I do have a video showing you how to make your own color wheel, so I definitely suggest you check that out. It is always really handy to have, and it's really good to know color theory. So the basics, we have our primary colors, red, blue, and yellow. And if you mix two primary colors together, you get a secondary color. So red and yellow make orange, yellow and blue make green, blue and red make purple. And then these in between are tertiary colors. Like I said, I have videos on that. You can look at those to go in depth. But today what we're gonna be doing is we are going to be creating a painting using contrasting colors. And contrasting colors, also known as complementary colors, are the colors that sit across from each other on the color wheel. So here you have blue and orange, yellow and purple, and red and green. Now using those colors in a painting together can really catch the viewer's eye. It can complement each other really, really well. Um, but also if you mix those two colors together, you can get a shade of brown. So you gotta be careful when using them together, um, which I also have videos on. I have videos on all this stuff. Please check them out. <laughs> and yeah, so today we're gonna be using my favorite combination, which is blue and orange for a nice mountain piece. Um, that will hopefully be beautiful and catch your eye. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna grab our big brush and we're gonna create a gradient for the background from like a darker orange to a lighter yellow. So make sure your brush is nice and wet and we're just gonna wet the background. So we're gonna start off with wet on wet technique, 
which is when you have your wet surface and then you add the paint. This creates a really nice smooth blurry effect, but it can also be tricky if you're working on lower quality paper, which I will show you when I start working on the Canson. I'm not gonna go all the way down, I'm just gonna go about three quarters of the way. Maybe a bit more, okay? Now when you're doing wet on wet for a background, you wanna make sure you have enough water to get a nice light sheen over the whole paper. So just tilt it, make sure it's all wet. I can see some spots that are a little bit dry. Just wet those up, but you also don't wanna be tilting it and then have water rushing off or, or pooling in any areas, okay? You wanna have enough water that there's a nice shine over the whole thing, but not where it's dripping off your page, okay? So I'm just gonna make sure it's nice and wet. Also, if you are using lower quality paper, it may dry a little faster, actually it will dry a little faster, so you have to work kind of fast. Okay, so the first color I'm gonna grab is some cadmium yellow, and I'm just gonna start throwing it in there. And the reason why I'm using wet on wet for this is because it's the easiest way to blend colors together and get that nice seamless gradient from one color to the next. Okay, so I'm gonna leave it a little bit of a lighter yellow closer to the bottom, so not as much pigment. Okay, just dragging that yellow down so it's a lighter yellow. Now I'm gonna grab my cadmium red, which is more of an orange. Okay, if you see cadmium red with arches, or not arches, with <laughs> Windsor and Newton, um, it's more on the orangey side. If you want a nice like deep red, get cadmium red deep. Okay, but this is more of an orange but we're trying to work with orange anyway. I'm gonna grab my yellow and start blending those two together. So you get a nice gradient from orange to yellow to a really, really light yellow. And you just kind of move it back and forth coming down. Okay, keep it going. And there is a gradient for our sky. Now, if you wanna add a bit more like texture or something to your sky, you can always go in a little bit darker in some areas, maybe with some clouds. Maybe we'll do some like flat kind of clouds, just going back and forth. Bring some of that darker color down just a bit. Just to make it look a bit interesting. Okay, and remember if you ever make a mistake and you need to take your paper towel and blot and then you can go over it, okay? So that's what it's like with arches to create a gradient for a sky. Now I'm gonna show you what it's like with Canson because it is a little bit different. So like I mentioned, Canson dries really, really fast. It is not 100% cotton. Arches is 100% cotton, so it really soaks in the water and pigment and it stays wet longer. This has more of a, not plastic coating, but kind of, where the water sits on top. So it's harder for the water to soak in and then it dries a lot faster. So. For this, well, let's just try with this brush. I would try with an even bigger brush because it does dry so fast. And if you actually feel the difference, this paper is a lot smoother, which is not always great. You want it to be a bit more textured. Okay, so again, also it tends to pool more because it sits on top rather than soaking into the, the paper. So again, creating that same wet background, let's tilt it, make sure we see that nice sheen over the whole thing, not pooling. All right, let's grab our yellow. And it also reacts a little different. I haven't worked on Canson paper in so long, so let's see how this goes. Okay, I'm gonna start dragging that color down. Really just going back and forth. I'm gonna grab that darker orange. It's such a different feeling than arches. Not bad, it's just different, but if you're a beginner, you won't notice maybe if you're not using arches, but it's a little tougher to work on. Okay, let's grab some more yellow, try and blend them together in the middle. Just going back and forth. I also don't know if you can tell, arches is a bit more vibrant too. Okay, it really soaks in that color. I'm not trying to say go out and buy really expensive paper if you're a beginner. I'm just letting you know that if it's not looking the way you think it should, it's not you. It's your paper. Just keep working on 
your inexpensive paper until you feel comfortable or you realize that you really, really like watercolor and then you can, you know, upgrade. That was a lot of yellow. I'm just gonna wash, dry off my brush and then bring it down because I don't want it too yellow down here because we're gonna be doing blue mountains and it will tint it a bit too green. Okay, just going back. Okay, I'm gonna grab a little bit of that orange. Now, one problem that you might run into, especially if you're working with this paper, is make sure you don't have too, too much water on your brush because when you put too much water on your brush onto paper that already has pigment, it pushes the pigment away. I'm gonna quickly just show you. So say you go and pick up some pigment and then you put it there and you're gonna notice these like white patchy areas. Okay, and you'll get these weird funky blooms when it dries. I'm gonna do a whole video on blooms, but that's just because you have too much water in that one spot and they're gonna dry at a different rate and it will leave a weird mark that you may not like. If that happens, you can always mop it up a bit and then just wet your brush and try and blend it a bit better. Take some of that pigment off, okay? It's already dry down here. See how fast it dries? All right, so now that we have our skies, we're gonna let them completely dry before we move on and then we'll be right back. Okay, now that our skies are completely dry, you can see that they've dried a little bit lighter in color too. So keep that into account when you're doing this. Watercolor dries lighter. Um, so if you wanted to do another layer, re-wet the whole thing and make it more vibrant, you can do that too. I'm not gonna do that right now. Um, but yeah, so make sure it's completely dry. Let's work on our arches one first. And we're gonna start off with the mountains. Okay, so now we wanna create our blue that's gonna go nicely. You can do like a vibrant blue. I kinda wanna make it a bit more of a dusty blue. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my cadmium red, so that orangey red, and I'm gonna mix it a little bit into my turquoise and it creates this kind of like grayish blue, okay? And that's just my preference of color. You can definitely do a brighter blue, whatever you like. Now, the mountains that are furthest in the background are gonna be lighter in color than the ones in the foreground. So we're gonna work light to dark. So we're gonna be working wet on dry, so our background is nice and dry, and then light to dark. We're gonna create a light wash, and then we're gonna make it darker. So again, to create a light wash, you can add water to your palette and then wash and dry off your brush and pick up the color. But the way I like to do it the best, dip it in like that, take a lot of that pigment off, and then you can go just go straight into painting. So let's create a mountain. I'm gonna add a bit more water to my brush and I'm gonna drag it down. So it's a bit more on the gray side, but it has a tint of blue, which will complement the orange nicely because they're still contrasting colors when it's tinted blue. I'm gonna grab a bit more blue, I think. Take off some of that pigment in my water jar. Like that. I'm just gonna move it on down. Not, it doesn't have to go all the way down. Okay, and there is our first mountain. If you'd like to make it a little tiny bit darker, more pigmented at the edges, you can definitely do that. And now we let that completely dry. So let's do the same for the other one. Okay, grabbing our light wash of our pigment. I'm just creating a mountain. You can make it as peaky, as peaky, as many peaks or bumps as you like. I just like putting it on my brush on its side kind of and just skimming the surface to create an uneven mountain shape. Okay, and you can kind of see that orangish yellow through the mountain, which I kind of like because it kind of looks like it's like the sun glaring on those mountains that are far away. Okay, there we go. Now you're gonna let those completely dry. I'm gonna give you one little tip that I like to use for drying my paintings. You can just wait and let it dry um, on its own but I really like using my heat tool. So this is a heat tool that I got from a website called Simon Says Stamp a bunch of years ago. It was like 20 bucks. It's just a craft heat tool. It has an on and off switch. 
okay? And it just blows out hot air at a low setting. So the paint doesn't splatter everywhere. It just dries it really quickly. I use this because I do my tutorials and I'm on a time crunch to do these. So it just dries everything really fast. You do not have to use these. I also know of other people using hair dryers. So like a really kind of old crappy hair dryer that doesn't have a lot of power on a very low setting will do something similar. But be careful if your hair dryer is too powerful, it could blow your paint splattered all over the place. So just keep that in mind. But you don't need this. You could just wait, read a book, sing a song. I don't know, whatever works. Okay, so our first layer is done. Let's work on our second layer. You can make it a bit more blue and we're gonna make it a little bit darker so again, just grabbing a little bit of that cadmium red, more of my turquoise, a bit more cadmium red to make it a bit darker, a bit more turquoise. And then I'm just gonna take a little bit of that pigment off. Okay, it's gonna be naturally darker because it's already going over paint, but you want it a little bit of a shade darker. Okay, so let's go do another mountain piece of land. Add water to my brush and I'm blending it out. So it's already lighter when I add water to my brush, but I can just add more pigment. But you want it to blend out nicely. You don't want any harsh lines down here. So that's why I added more water. Bringing it all the way down. Let's get more color on our brush. Make it a bit darker. Like that. Okay, so there's our second one. I'm gonna make it a bit more rigid. Okay, there's our second one. Let's do the other paper. Adding water to my brush, blending out that bottom line and bringing it down. And now we wait for that layer to dry on both of them. Okay, let's get our next layer going. I'm gonna add a bit more blue, I think, to this layer. And again, we're just making it darker. I feel like it needs to be a bit darker than that. Let's grab more paint. There we go, blend it out. Okay, there we go. Same thing over here. Okay, let's dry these layers. And I think we're just gonna do one more layer. You can do as many or as little layers as you like with this. It really is totally up to you. 
I'm gonna make this last layer nice and dark. You know what, I think we might add trees too because why not? It's a very, very simple painting, but I feel like we could add just a little bit more to it to make it a bit more interesting. Let's add a bit more color here. Make that nice and dark. Okay, and then what I'm gonna do while it's still wet so it blends nicely, I'm going to grab my size six brush and I'm gonna take that same dark blue as our last layer and I'm gonna do some trees. So with the tip of my brush and really, really light pressure, I'm just gonna do a nice like vertical line and then I'm gonna do these tiny little branches coming off and you don't want it you know, perfect. It, no tree is perfect, right? So you can have some gaps on one side, but you're just doing these tiny little messy strokes coming down. And this is in like the background, right? Like it's doesn't have to be perfect. Just start with that line going up. Do the first couple little branches pointing up like in a V and then have them slowly coming down. Like that and just have it blend into the mountain. Maybe I'll just do a couple just to show you. And you could always do this on any layer. So maybe if you're doing like the far, far background, take that same color, that same really, really light first wash and do this, the trees in the background. And then it will look like those trees are in the mist, like in the background, which can look cool. But I didn't want to make it too complicated right now. But you could do this however you like, just messily bring out some branches. Okay, and then try and blend it in with that mountain. Let's just do one more right now. Like that. Okay, and then let's do it on our last one. So one more layer of mountains. Nice and dark. Grab your smaller brush. and do the same thing. Okay, let's dry it so we can get the full effect of what it looks like. Okay, so they are both done. Let's take off the tape. So I always leave a nice little border when I put on my tape so you get that little border when you take off the tape. I just find it looks really nice. Okay, so there you go. This paper ripped by accident, but that's okay. That is how you do a simple mountain scene. I don't know if you guys can tell the difference between the arches and Canson paper. Arches is so much more textured and I feel it gives that really nice watercolor look. Canson is just fine to use if it works for you. Um, but as a beginner, you may run into some trouble. Just remember, it is not you, it is your paper. And when you feel comfortable, you can upgrade. But until then, there are ways to work with it and it will look just fine. 
But let me know in the comments below what you thought of this tutorial. What do you thought about the difference in paper? Remember, I have tons more videos on all of these subjects. Please look in the description below if you're interested in any of those videos. And there you go. I really hope you guys enjoyed this simple mountain tutorial. Thank you all so much for watching my video. I really hope you liked it and I hope you learned something. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel and follow me on Instagram for even more. Have a great day, guys. Bye.